Hi folks, we're here in the Airway Skills Lab at UCT and we're going to go over a new piece of kit that we've obtained which is a highly portable intubating video endoscope. This might be a useful video to review if you haven't come across this kit yet or if you are working with video endoscopes and want to review or refresh your knowledge of how everything fits together. So, in the box, which can be transported quite easily, is the endoscope itself. This is a 5.8 millimeter external diameter chip-in-tip video endoscope, which has got a, an onboard display screen. So it sits on the scope body itself, which you can look on when you're busy working with it clinically. Importantly, we, it's got a rechargeable battery system and two rechargeable batteries with a battery housing that screws into the scope. You'll also notice that there's a pressure manometer and a seal which protects the scope during cleaning and allows us to do pressure tests before we operate it. So, first thing to do when you're using the scope is to do the pressure test and make sure that the scope is intact. You'll see that when it needs to be cleaned, on top of the scope here is a delicate set of electrical connections and that has to be protected from any kind of fluid ingress. To do that, there is a sealing cap which simply screws on top of the scope and seals it watertight against any solutions or can also be used for uh, autoclaving the system. You have a pressure manometer and a manometer hose and this connects on the one side to the manometer and on the other side it attaches to the pr pressure seal. Once that's nicely connected you can then pump up your manometer. You want to aim here at a pressure somewhere in the green range, probably around about 150 millimeters of mercury. What this is doing now is it's making sure that the scope integrity is intact and that there are no leaks from the outside or from the working channel into the inner workings of the scope. You can see here that the pressure is not falling, it's nice and steady, and so we know that the scope is intact. This should be done before every use and after use before the scope is cleaned. Right, so having pressure tested it, now we need to get the scope working. First thing to do is to grab one of the batteries, which should hopefully have been fully charged, and drop it into the battery housing with the positive pole sticking out on the end. This battery housing then screws in neatly into the scope over here, and it makes electrical contact at the same time. You'll notice if we, that the scope has also got a suction connector here. You can connect your suction tubing to that. I'm not going to do that for the point of this demonstration, but when the scope is in operation, your forefinger sits very nicely on the suction button, and you can depress it to suck. Bear in mind that this whole assembly can be removed, and it's got a set of quite sensitive O-rings there. Be careful that you don't take this out or lose it, but it can be removed for cleaning purposes by the technologists. Right, so we've got power. Now we need to see. As I said, this scope has got a display monitor that connects onto the scope. And you'll see that inside here we've got the male side fitting for that rather sensitive electronic connection. You've got to make sure that you orientate this correctly. So the screen will be facing towards you, and your thumb will be operating the lever to flex the tip of the scope up and down. So these two parts then made together nice and smoothly and you can see that just wiggling it gently it slots in carefully and then you can screw the, the cap to lock it. This doesn't require any kind of force to operate so there I've unscrewed it and just a gentle wiggle it comes apart. Wiggle it in to lock it in again and lock the collar. Right, now the scope is fully assembled and we're ready to operate it. If I was going to use this clinically now, I would put a thin layer of lubricant on the outside of the scope and I would preload my endotracheal tube ready to go. The scope monitor is switched on using one of these two little buttons on the side. Push that in and voila, the screen comes on and I immediately get a picture. Now you'll notice that the white balance in this picture is quite bad. Uh, it's looking very pink at the moment. The second button on the side here is a white button, a white balance button. So I simply point the scope at a white surface, a swab, a piece of paper, in this case I'm using the tabletop, and push and hold the button until it shows AWB in the corner, automatic white balance has been completed. Now you can see that the color and the hue of the scope is a lot better. Now I'm ready to use it clinically. Let's pull old Bronco Boy over here and give you a quick demonstration. 
once again, the outside of the scope will be nicely lubricated and I'll be ready to operate. I'm going to have my thumb operating the flex up and down lever, and that's going to flex the tip of the scope as I'm working. You'll see the tip of the scope has got a set of two little LEDs. There is a working channel there, which is connected to the working channel over here. And you notice that now, because I'm wanting to operate the suction, I've got a rubber seal on there so that the suction functions. If this is not sealed by a rubber seal or a syringe, obviously the suction will just suck straight out there. I haven't connected suction tubing for the demonstration. So, I can now pop my scope into the, the doll or into the patient and I can go off on a great adventure in endoscopy. Doing a nasal intubation here, finding my way through the oropharynx, aha, seeing some epiglottis and vocal cords appearing and off we go, do a little bit of steering Ross, try and keep this on the camera for you, there we go, some vocal cords, hello vocal cords and off we go. All right. Easy, no mess, no fuss, easy to use. Important that if you were doing this clinically, obviously you would want to be keeping the insertion tube nice and straight so that you've got steering authority. You wouldn't have a kink in it like I've done now on the video, uh, but this is just for purposes of demonstration. When coming out with a scope, remember not to operate the lever so that the tip is free to move and doesn't damage the Barton cables on the inside. Coming out smoothly and firmly, and there we go. We're out. Right. This particular little monitor has got a very nice feature in that it can also capture data for us and we can download that later using the included data cable. Next to the suction button on the front of the scope, there is a second button and that operates the camera. One single click and it takes a photograph. Take another picture for me. There you can see the photo icon flashing and it's recording that to a 16 gigabyte internal memory. If I press and hold the button, I get a video mode and it started video recording now and I can record interesting pathology intubations and other things and a single click will stop the video recording. So very nice feature that there's built-in internal memory which is downloadable. When I'm done using the scope I'm going to press and hold the power button it says goodbye and now I can take everything apart. So again loosen the locking collar wiggle the screen a little bit and it should come off fairly easily. Make sure I loosen that in the right direction. There we go, and you can pack that away in its box. Unscrew the battery pack, and now before we send this for cleaning, we must not forget to attach the sealing cap to protect the inner workings of the scope. Now I can give that off to my technologists and they can go and disinfect the scope for me. Right, that's it.